excited because I got BP on here. I've known BP for quite a while. He likes to talk about mindsets. And I've seen him come up from somebody who was out there on the streets doing bandit signs. So now you're a millionaire, dude. So <laughs> Yeah, ain't that some shit, right? <laughs> what's, what's fun and what's different about talking to you is you're just completely unfiltered and you cuss up a fucking storm. And I think that we should just feel free to do that all fucking show long. <laughs> yes, and I'm glad that you gave that disclaimer. So first of all, if you guys have problem with profanity, I would probably suggest you skip this fucking show because I'm gonna, I just, that's the way that I am. Second of all, I would highly suggest if you do have problem with profanity, try to hear past the profanity. A lot of times people hear profanity and they automatically make an assumption. Oh, this guy, he's a fucking idiot. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Look, at he's very unprofessional. There's no way that nobody would ever let him borrow money. But here we are. So anyway, if you're one of those people, I would highly suggest to try to look past that and really listen to the message and the value that we're going to be delivering here today. However, if cussing really pisses you off, then fucking get the fuck off. <laughs> yeah, man. I actually had a problem with, with your approach, your cussing, and, and that for a while. And I was like, man, how can he, like, declare that he's a professional? But, I mean, when you look at your track record and what you've created, which the audience is going to hear in a second, you got you to gotta stand behind. If you're going to do whatever the fuck you want to do and still create results and do it however the fuck you want to, then who am I to say how you should approach yourself, how you should approach your life and how you should approach your business. So I think a lot of people misconceive just like what you're talking about. You know, the worst thing that I ever yeah. did, the worst thing that I ever did when I first started in business is that I separated who I really was and, and between like that person and the this business persona, you know, I needed to be professional and shit. And what happened is I was working with this guy and he was like, Hey man, you know, one of my, one of my investors reached out to me and he, he didn't really like the fact that you cuss on Facebook. So like, if you can like tone that down a little bit, that would really help me out. And, and, and I did it because I was part of the team, you know, I was trying to be a team player. Those were the worst, those were the fucking worst six months of my life. I fucking hated it. I felt like my goddamn soul was dying on the inside. It really, it really just, it irritated the fuck out of me. The best thing that ever happened to me was that I separated from that guy. And then eventually I just became myself. I said, you know what? I don't need to pretend because the last thing that I want is to fucking intrigue you to do business with me. Cause I'm trying to be all professional and shit. And I show up with a suit and a tie and, and all this fucking horse shit. And then you find out that I like to smoke weed, that I drink shit tons of alcohol, that I cuss like a motherfucker. And now you feel shafted. I don't want that. I want you to know this is who the fuck I am from the very fucking beginning. And here's what's happened, uh, Ruben. And this, this is something that has happened with you and has happened with other people. Meaning that there's some people that just don't like it off the bat. And most of the time, it's not that they don't like me. It's just that they're, that they're programmed to believe this is what professional is. You know, you have to show up in a Mercedes. You have to show up in a suit. You have to show up in a tie. You have to talk this way. So a lot of times it throws people off. However, what I have found out, and, and there's a great quote by Dr. Seuss that says, those that matter don't, those that matter don't mind, and those in mind don't matter. And I do, there is nothing that I have found out to be more true than that, because the most successful people, the richest motherfuckers that I know, the multi, multi-millionaires and billionaires that I have met and like me personally, they like me specifically because I cuss like a motherfucker, even though they don't cuss like that. Because you know, one thing that they realize and the same thing that you realize, Ruben, is that this is authenticity. The guy that doesn't mind walking in and being like, what's up motherfuckers, how the fuck are y'all doing? It's the same guy that's gonna call you and say, hey, you know what, man, here's what's going on with that deal. That man, I, I fucked up. I, I thought it was gonna be this way, it actually is gonna be that way. Um, I'm not going to be able to pay you what I told you I was going to pay you, but I promise you I'm going to make it up. I'll find a way to make it up to you. Rich, successful people recognize that. And one thing that I've noticed that rich and successful people like more than absolutely anything is authenticity because they're so used to everybody being fucking fake. They're so used to everybody fucking trying to kiss their fucking ass to get to their fucking money. 
And today, you know, we're, I'm on the capital raising show. We're going to be talking about raising capital, how I raise capitals for my fucking flips, how I raise capitals for my multifamilies across the country, how I raise uh, capital for my, uh, for my single family rentals and my notes that we're creating. And every single one of these people, the more successful they are, the more money they have, the more they get a fucking kick. They just love because I talk to them like I would talk to the, any other person. I'll treat the fucking CEO and the janitor the exact same fucking way because fuck you, motherfucker. I'm not going to pretend to be something else that I'm not because I want you to like me. And if you don't like me, guess what? I don't want to do fucking business with you anyway. Yeah, that's a very personal trait that you have. It's something that I, I think a lot of people, including myself, they're scared to jump into their, their authenticity and their vulnerability. My wife even says like, you should remove the snowboards from the, from the back of the fucking room because people don't, they don't want to, they don't give a shit about you snowboarding. They, they just care about the content. And I'm like, well, fuck that's it. not true. They need to know who the fuck I am and my background and, and the challenges that I've gone through. I mean, a year ago, I just got off a, a phone call with this guy and I told him my story. I'm not sure how it led into this. It was just a lead off LinkedIn. And he was like, man, I'm, I'm in a really fucking dark place and I hate this. And man, this is my fucking background. And I hated this part. And I was with these shady motherfuckers. And, and I told him, man, your story is just like mine, man. A year ago, if you knew, I mean, I'm reaching out to you on behalf of this amazing company with this phenomenal track record and multifamily syndicators. And they don't necessarily talk the way I do or represent the same beliefs that I have but we synergize because I, I help them with the branding and some social media. And I have a little bit of uh, power in that regard. But I told them man a year ago, I was sitting in the fucking ranch in Sedona that my family has drinking like 20, 30 beers a day, 50 pounds fucking heavier than I am right now. And he said, man, how did you get out of that? Like today I see you as successful. You're with a multifamily syndication company. I'm in a fucking rut. How do I get out of it? And, and I was telling him, man, you just need to, in some cases, fucking go so deep into the fucking hole of like hatred or, or, or the dark, the dark spark, the evil part of you, you know, where you get so fucking sick of it that you have to change, man. And that's what happened with me. And I made a decision to change. And as soon as I did that, the universe started conspiring on my behalf. My wife reached out to me before, before we were even talking and invited me to New York. I got inspired by her. I got inspired by myself and then started looking into getting back into multifamily. And somehow, some way, I ended on track to get involved with the multifamily syndication. But the, the reality is, is that you have to connect with some people by being vulnerable and sharing the fucking, the dark spots that you've gone through because other people connect with that when they see that you're a real fucking person too. You the best I mean? thing that I've ever done myself has be very vulnerable. <clears throat> so a lot of times people, people want to be like me in the sense that people want to be authentic. However, where a lot of people fuck up is that they, they limit their authenticity. So yeah. I'm going to be authentic about this, but I'm not going to be authentic about that. I'm not going to let people know about my struggles because I'm supposed to be a real estate investor. I'm supposed to be a millionaire. You're not supposed to know that the day that I received my biggest fucking check, my bank account was actually negative. Like, you're not supposed to know that. I'm not supposed to tell you that. You're not supposed to know that I came from the ghetto. You're not supposed to know that I struggled. You're not supposed to know that I was smoking weed from a, a very early age. You're not supposed to know that I got really drunk last night. Like, that's not the professional image that I want to put out there. And a lot of times people really shoot themselves in the foot. You know, you said something earlier about your wife telling you to remove those, uh, those boards. Hell no. Fuck no. On the contrary, put more up there. Put more of yourself out there. The, the majority of people that I have connected with, the majority of people that actually let me borrow money, like, because there's a lot of people that will tell you they'll let you borrow money, but the actual people that actually put the fucking money in my goddamn bank account, a large majority of those people connected with me initially because of other things. Weed smoking being one of them, traveling being another one, that little stuffed monkey that I carry all over the place being some of them my adventurous eatings, 
just trying trying out different restaurants, eating anything. Oh my God, I saw you eating crickets. That's fucking crazy. Uh, by the way, you know, I've been, I see that you're in real estate. I actually have some money sitting here. Uh, I've been meaning to reach out, but let's, let's, let's go eat, let's go eat some weird food and let's talk about it. <laughs> and, and I have a saying, cause I do a lot of public speaking and I, I speak all across the country. And I have a saying, normally when I start my speeches, I make the majority of my money smoking weed, drinking alcohol, and eating food with people. That's really the large majority of that. And a lot of those connections start because I was vulnerable, because I was open, because I shared, hey, guys, look, here's, here's the reality of things. Like, don't get fooled by this shit. This is not all fucking candy and roses and pretty flowers and shit. And if you follow a lot of these other investors out there, they, they, they fall under that category. They don't want to talk about their defeats. They don't want to talk about their losses. I only focus on the win. And one of the things that, I, that hit me the most, because this is something that I've, that I've struggled with myself, and last, not last January, but the, the January before, so almost two years ago, I went up to Sedona myself. I had a very deep spiritual awakening with the assistance of psychedelics. And I specifically went in there with the purpose to talk to these different aspects of my psyche and really get down deep. And when I got to the deepest, deepest, darkest parts of my mind, I faced my anger face to face. And that motherfucker was pissed. And that motherfucker was extra pissed because he said, fuck you. You use me for energy. You use me to fuel yourself and to fuel your fucking success, but you never give me credit. You want to be pretend to be a fucking Mr. Positive, always positive. That's not reality. Nothing, nothing, nothing made me better person, a more whole person, a more mature person, a better businessman, a better investor than when I embraced my dark side. It, it, it was something so refreshing to me. And one of the things that I, that, that I saw just right after that or right before that, somewhere around that time frame, was that new Star Wars movie that came out, The Last Jedi. And in the movie, the protagonist goes to find Luke Skywalker, which is the OG kind of, you know, he was the main hero for the first three movies. <laughs> anyway, she goes find him and she wants to go learn from the Grand Master, Luke Skywalker. And she comes in and she wants to be all positive and, you know, we're the light and, and we're, we're the good side of the force. And he's like, girl, don't believe that bullshit. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. All right, right. You say that. <laughs> he said, don't believe that crap. You have to embrace both sides. You need to find balance. And that's one of the things that people are very afraid to open up their authenticity. But I'm telling you guys, as somebody who has raised money for many fucking years, the majority of my money comes from when I'm, a, I'm authentic. The majority of my money comes from people connecting with me, wanting to be around me. A lot of people come up to me and say, older people, by the way, hey, you know what? I don't talk like you. I mean, I, you know, I don't really like that language usually, but I really enjoy the fact that you use that language. I appreciate the, the fact that if I have an idea, I'm going to come to you because I know that you're going to tell me if you think it fucking sucks or not. You're not going to just tell me, oh, yeah, that sounds good, just like everybody else. That's authenticity. Yeah, man, it's fucking scary to get authentic like that. Way scary because you don't know how people are going to react. Once again, guys, we are programmed to believe that we have to do a certain thing and it has to be a certain way. If I were to say doctor, there's a certain image that comes to your head. If I were to say lawyer, if I were to say fireman, if I were to say gangster, if I were to say fill in the fucking blank, it doesn't fucking matter. You already have an automatic association to that. That's called our programming. People taught you. People told you, hey, you know what? When you're a millionaire, you're supposed to drive a Lamborghini. You're supposed to wear fucking fancy watches. You're supposed to show it off. That's not the reality of our life. We make it a reality because we actually believe this shit. And a lot of times that dictates who we become. 
And one of the things that I do, and I'm actually, so I do one-on-one -on -one personal coaching for mindset. And I'm actually, because that is expensive to hire me personally one-on-one, -on -one, um, I actually started and I'm putting together a online subscription site where I'm gonna be rolling my program out online and it's gonna be a lot more affordable so a lot more people can take advantage of that. However, step number one is find out who the fuck you are and what the fuck makes you happy. Because a lot of us are so hell-bent on following this, 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 this illusion because it's not even fucking real. It's not real. Somebody who didn't know a fucking millionaire told you how millionaires are supposed to fucking act. The first time I met our mentor, uh, you know, your mentor, my mentor, Mr. Jeff Fagan, I was shocked. He was the first millionaire that I met face to face, actually on an interaction, not by going to some, you know, not by going to some MLM pitch where their millionaire guy is there and everybody's trying to shake his hand. But like in a, in a guy, I met him at a fucking networking event. When I found out that he was a millionaire, I couldn't believe how kind he was. I couldn't believe how open he was. I couldn't believe how generous he was. This, here's, here's an old Jewish man who says, hey man, come to my club, my meeting, we're gonna talk about it. I'm like, guaranteed this motherfucker's gonna sell me something. <laughs> Guaranteed, look at this old Jew, of course he's gonna fucking sell me something. He's got shit for sale. <laughs> he, he always has shit for sale. However, he didn't sell me anything. That's true. Man. To the class, and he's like, I'm, I'm like, how much is it to go to the class? He's like, it's free. He's an expert at creating relationships and providing value. And then once he gets gets you to a point where you're getting value, then he eases you in that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a very creative way to do it. And he's, I mean, it's working for him. It, it, it works for him. You know why it works for him? Because he's authentic. Yeah. Because in the beginning, when he is giving you all this value, he generally doesn't give a shit if you do business with him or not. That's, true. That's not the purpose. He doesn't sit there. And I know because I hang out with him personally at his house, at my house, hang out with his wife. Uh, you know, I took her out for her birthday last year. Like, I mean, I, I know these people for known them for a very long time. He doesn't do this shit work. You know what? Here's my plan is I'm going to put together these meetings. And from there, I'm going to siphon off people that are going to eventually buy me or do this. None of that shit. He really genuinely cares about this shit. We, he'll come over to the house sometimes and we'll just start talking. And before you know it, it's been two fucking hours. And he genuinely cares about getting people to the right mindset. He generally does give a shit about that. And that authenticity shows. So when he presents me with the business opportunity, I actually listen. I normally say no, but I, <laughs> I actually listen because I know that if he's bringing me this opportunity, he's going to be authentic about it. He's going to be like, here's the reality of things. He's not going to give me the, the speech that, that, that's practice. He actually, look, here's what's going on. Here's what I believe. Here's, what's, here's what I've done so far. Here's how much I've invested. This is what I think is a good deal. Yeah, man. And for the Phoenix, the people in Phoenix that are interested in hearing Jeff Fagan speak, man, I highly recommend him. I do consider him a mentor. And one of the reasons I went back there, honestly, was because I saw you having success, VP, and I knew that you were there every Tuesday, man. You've been there every Tuesday since, like, the fucking time I went to Mexico. You've been going for years and years and years. I've been, I've been going to those things for eight years in a row. I'm getting close to nine years right now. Yeah, so I, I do that. I needed to work on my mindset because I had all kinds of demons and shit. I could not figure out how to get back into real estate at all. I just wanted to do it by myself, and I had all these personal fucking roadblocks, these mental mind blocks. How the fuck am I going to acquire fourplexes? I knew that my specific passion was multifamily, but I was trying to do it by myself. And just through hanging out with people at the two percent club and surrounding myself with that type of energy and even with my mastermind with my wife man all of those things have completely changed the way that i look at things and the things that i attract and manifest into my life so i'm the, worst, the worst thing that you can do in this business and is be a lone wolf so let me where the fuck is this at uh don't let me see you i can see that that is my, that is my first tattoo that says hustle I specifically got that at the age of 22, 
is what it was. My friend just came out of prison. He had been tattooing people. This was actually done with a prison tattoo gun. Uh, it was a hollowed out pen with a sharpened guitar string uh, running on a uh, Walkman uh, motor. <laughs> Uh, nonetheless, though, I purposely had that because I was a hustler. And as a hustler, which a lot of you people claim to be, you're very lone wolfy. You're very, I depend on my own skills. I, I, I figure this shit out myself. I'm the fucking shit. I'm the man. I'm the woman. I can fucking handle all this shit. That is honestly the best, the worst thing that you can do. The absolute worst that you can do because you start alienating yourself, all of a sudden your way is the only way, things don't really work out that way. And one thing that you find out is that, if, and, and every single hustler eventually finds this out, there's a cap to that shit. You can only do so much. You only have so much energy. Yeah, you're probably better off than fucking 95% of the people out there, but nonetheless, you're gonna be capped. You're not gonna reach those extra levels when you're doing everything and depending solely on yourself, that, that just, that doesn't work. And finding a team is, 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 is vital in, in ways. And, and you don't have, you know, a team doesn't have to be like you start a company and now you have employees or you, or you join a different organization, but networking with the right people, joining, joining up in the right partnerships. Most of the time, like my team is not, nobody really works for me other than my personal assistant. Everybody else are just business partners. These are different people that I partner up with. And even with those people, I don't partner up with everything that they do. I just partner up with the shit that's going to help me out, that's going to take me to the place that I want to go. And as long as we can create a win-win scenario, we're going to move forward with it. But I learned, just like you said, from, from my partnerships, from my, from my networking events, from my speaking engagements, from my social media and connecting people on there, Man, I, I learned so much. I learned what to do. More importantly, I learned what not to do. I, I, I see people's struggles. And I have a oh fuck, I have a plaque somewhere back there. And it says, learn from other people's mistakes because you don't have enough time to make them all yourself. That's wise. And I, tell, and I say it all the time. I am a very smart person because I learn from my mistakes. But I am a fucking genius because I learned from other people's mistakes. Fuck yeah, that's good shit, dude. Hey, so you had a podcast, or at least a live broadcast. With we, the we, we still have it, we just took, uh, we take the summers off. Angel. Ah, yeah, man, I bet you people are hurting fucking for your content, man. Man, people, people message us at least uh, once a week saying, hey, when are you guys coming on? What's going on? And this is gonna be our, thank you, this is going to be our third year running the show, and every single summer we take the, the summer off, and every single summer people are like, hey, where'd you guys go? <laughs> we missed that. So, yeah, I, I do still have the show. That one's called Flipping Fridays. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Podbean. You can find us on Facebook under our page, AZ Flip Guys. And, and basically what we do is we talk about every single aspect of real estate from literally getting started to – buying multifamily and raising money shit there's actually uh so the last two multifamilies that we bought i showed you from the very beginning to the very end every fucking thing like literally uh we, when we went to inspections there was a camera there the day that i locked it up we told you about it we told you about how much money we were raising we talked we, there was a day that we literally whooped out the whiteboard and said okay here's how much money we're raising here's how much money's coming from our investors here's how we're making our money here's the projections here's everything here's how we're locking it down every single aspect of that has been on the az flip guys so yeah make sure you guys check that out in regards to capital raising, what can you tell the audience about how, what are some of your best practices? First of all, be fucking honest. Be fucking honest. People think that in order to raise capital, you need to know what you're talking about. You need to have experience. You need to come from a certain background. You need to act a certain way. And that's just not the way that it fucking is. And once again, guys, if you do attract somebody that way and you do raise capital that way, it's going to be a rocky relationship once they find out who the fuck you are anyway. 
<laughs> so just be fucking honest. Hey, you know what? I, uh, me, I've never done a multifamily deal. Not at all. I Actually, I own several doors right now. However, I am partnered up with some people that have done this before. I, have, I am partnered up with some people that currently own blah, 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 fill in the fucking blank. How much, how much money are you looking to make? You know what? I, I, I would love to answer that question for you. I don't know, but I, here's the, here, I'll get back to you. Let me, let me find out. Let me, ask my, let me ask my business partners. Let me write down all these questions that you have, and I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll answer those questions for you. You know the one thing that pisses me off the most is when you go to like a Home Depot. Home Depot's the worst about this, by the way. The absolute worst. You go and you pull a fucking douchebag, right? Whatever the fuck their guys is. And, 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 and no offense if you work at a Home Depot, but holy shit, man. They, they scrape the bottom of the barrel for those motherfuckers. They really do. And, and it probably have to do with what they pay them. But nonetheless, you go and you say, hey, man, where can I find this type of screw? Instead of telling you, I don't know. They say, oh, uh, um, uh, and they fucking walk up and down the store and up and down the aisles. I'm like, motherfucker, I could have done that shit. Like, just fucking tell me you don't know. Just say, hey, go ask Bob over there because Bob knows. I'll search for Bob. That's, that's the absolute worst, but people can't just fucking say, I don't know. So one of, by far, by far, by far, the best practice that I have for raising money is just be honest. Be open and honest. Here's what I'm doing. Here's how much experience I have. Here's, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me find out here. Because people, you know, people that lend you money, they want to know really, really, really deep. Down. They're going to ask you a few things. You know, how much, how long do you need my money for? When do I get this shit back? How much are you going to pay me for borrowing my money? And uh, how do I know that you're going to fucking pay me? Or how do I secure myself from that to, that you're actually going to? Like that's, those are the generic basic questions. What they really, 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 really want to know is can I trust your motherfucking ass? Yeah. They have can to I like trust you. your ass with my 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, that shit that I, I sold that company that I worked fucking 10 years to build. And now I have some money to actually invest and I'm going to give you a few hundred thousand. Can I trust your ass? What the fuck are you going to do when shit goes wrong? Are you going to fucking lie to me? Or are you going to look me in the eye and say, dude, look, this shit didn't work out the way they were expecting. Here's what we're looking to do. And here's how I'm going to make it better. You're better off from the investor standpoint, just telling them that. I don't know. Absolutely. They're not going to look at you for less of. And this goes back to our original conversation of authenticity. Everybody's afraid of what other people are going to say. Oh, what the hell they're going to think about me. They're going to think I'm a loser because I don't know the answer to this question. When in reality, it's the complete opposite. They appreciate the fuck that you look them right in the eye and you say, I don't know. Hey, when am I going to get my money back? I don't know. How much am I going to get? I don't know. I, but I can connect you with the people that do know. They appreciate that. They appreciate that so much more than you just bullshitting them. So what deals you got right now in your portfolio? I know that you're working on some stuff in Ohio coming up, but what have you done up to this point so that the audience knows that you're fucking legit? Um, well, I mean, I, first of all, they should be able to fucking tell just by my goddamn energy coming out. <laughs> because there, you, can't, you can't fake this shit. You can't fake the funk. Seriously, guys, follow me on my Instagram, at Cashflow Creator. Follow my stories. I put everything up there. You can see, fuck, you can track back, follow me on Facebook, you can track back 10 years to when I was getting started and I was broke as fuck. And you can see the authenticity moving forward. So this, first of all, that, that's just that. Second of all, for you guys that like to get off on how much I've done or whatever the fuck, um, I've been wholesaling since 06, 07. I lost track of how many wholesale deals I've ever done. I don't keep track of how much money I've done in wholesaling or I've done this many transactions or I've sold or bought and sold X amount of money on fucking real estate. I don't fucking do that shit because it's not fucking important. I did a shit ton of flips. Uh, there was a time at the height of my flipping career when I was flipping 15 houses at a time. Uh, it, I, like I said, I don't fucking know how many houses I fucking flipped. It doesn't fucking matter anyways. 
I don't, I, I don't want to estimate how many millions of dollars we flipped or whatever the fuck was going on. Like that shit, that shit's irrelevant. Uh, eventually I started seeing what, what I started realizing what I told you guys earlier that there's a limitation to being that lone wolf. There's a limitation to being a hustler because now you have to hustle again and again and again and again and again, and it's always going to depend on you. So I started looking for cash flow. I started looking for different ways. What's going to happen to me if I get hit by a bus, right? What's going to happen to my children if I disappear? Well, I, I like to travel a lot. I like to get into some crazy situations when I travel. What if I fucking, what if I get lost in Bangkok and never fucking come back? Cause I'm going to Bangkok fucking here at the end of the year. I needed to know that there was ways to cover my families, to cover my bills, to cover everything else. So I started looking into cash flow. Uh, I, I bought a few properties here, uh, single family properties here in Phoenix, and I, I, it, it was just going too slow for me. I, I needed something a little bit more accelerated, so I moved into multifamily. Uh, I started multifamily probably two years ago, and within a year or so, we were up to like 100 and... 110 doors or something along those lines. Now, I, I learned about it about two years ago. It took me probably six months or so before I, I locked in my first deal. And for you guys that know the multifamily process, it's a very long, drawn out process uh, from the due diligence to, to verifying everything, to getting everything put together. Uh, so it, it took a while to close this particular deal. But it, it, I finally closed. I think I closed. When the fuck did I close? January of last year was when I officially closed my first multifamily deal that was not here in Arizona. Then from there, I partnered up with uh, Chris Ontiveros, who's the guy, the, the other guy that does the AZ Flip guys with me. And we just sat down and said, look, man, this is where we want to go. I said, dude, I'm not doing any more flips. I, I completely refuse to do another fucking flip. So you can join me and I'm looking to build cash flow or, or, you know, you can continue doing the show, but I'm just letting you know that I'm not, I'm not doing that shit anymore. One of the things so. that I like about the way that you approach people is, I mean, you told me at lunch the other day, we're at the fucking barbecue place and you were talking about, man, if you only focus on one thing, multifamily syndication, you're not going to have enough to offer. There's going to be a lot of people that you're turning away. And that's, that's an aspect that I appreciate about you is you are doing some new builds, you're doing some, some flips, you're doing some notes, and then you're out yeah, of well, the there's a certain There's a certain virtue to focus. There's a certain virtue to saying, I'm only going to do this. And by the way, when I first started in multifamily, I was laser focused in multifamily. I only wanted to do multifamily. I wasn't going to talk to anybody about a flip. I wasn't going to talk to anybody about a wholesale. I wasn't interested in mentoring people because I didn't want to talk about that newbie shit. I only wanted to talk about multifamily. I only, only wanted to hang around multifamily people. I only wanted to listen to multifamily CDs. Anything that had to do with multifamily, that's the only shit that I wanted to do and I needed to do to get me to that point. I'm in that space right now. What, what ended up happening was that I realized that the multifamily space and people get a hard on for multifamily because it's the new hot thing, uh, you know, about two years ago. a long time, bro. And about, well, no, and I'm, 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 I'm talking about just the general public. Yeah. About two years ago or so, the guru started realizing, hey man, the, the market's shifting nationwide and, uh, you know, the cash flow. So, we, we need to start focusing on that. And a lot of the gurus start talking about multifamily. And honestly, very few of them know what the fuck they're fucking talking about because I know a lot of them. Nonetheless, though, um, people started kind of jumping on that bandwagon. And as you go, you start seeing that it's very laser focused, but you kind of pigeonhole yourself in this, in this situation, meaning for investors. You pigeonhole yourself in a way where you're a one-trick pony. Hey, Brian, I want to talk to you because I have some money to invest. Great. Let me tell you why multifamily is the way to fucking go. You don't care about their needs anymore. You care about your needs. And honestly, that's not the way to raise money. People don't care how much you know until, you know, until they know how much you care, right? We've all heard that shit before. And if you oh, haven't, write that motherfucker down. 
seriously. But yeah, then, if you can, you can kind of approach it from a different aspect too. And I understand what you're saying, but for some people, they don't give a shit what your investment is as long as you're solving their need. Yep. So you have to fucking go in deep and then find out first, connect with them, get them to trust you, find you credible, believe that you have capabilities to do what you say that you're going to do. And once those aspects are in place, then you have to find out what the fuck they want to do. You know, is it that their they, their kids don't have cash to go to college? Are they saving up for something in particular? They just need to fucking travel. And and that's one of the things too that you come up with is people don't even know. Some some of the reasons they don't invest is because they don't know what the fuck they want. No. You know, you talk about that in the two percent club. Like, go find out what the fuck you are, what the fuck you want to do, and then you can create success. Like people that are trying to come up in as entrepreneurs, they struggle with that. Like, I, I mean, even when I was a network marketer, we would like one of the first questions we'd ask is like, "What is it that you want to create?" And people would say money, and and they wouldn't have a specific number or what you know. So we'd say. If you had that money, what would you do with it? And they wouldn't, they would, they would just give you that blank look like, I don't know, man. I, I guess I would travel. And they'd come up with some shit that they thought sounded cool. Yep. You know? And that's, that's one of the things that led me to my epiphany with multifamily was that, once again, because multifamily was becoming the hot thing, investors, people with money were like, oh, I want to get into multifamily. I want to get into multifamily. That sounds good. Hey, Brian, I see you buying multifamily. Let me know for your next one. I'm, I'm in for sure. I got, I got money sitting here. The reality was that a whole shit ton of people raised their hands and only a very, very small select few actually let me borrow money for multifamily. And the next property was the same and the next property was the same. And every single syndicator that I know runs into the same problem. Even the biggest of the biggest fucking names, they all run into the same fucking problem. This investors promised me the money. It came time to raise the money, to deposit the money. And all of a sudden they didn't have enough. They couldn't come up with it. They changed their minds. Something, 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 bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And the problem with that is that as I said, when I first started it, I wanted to kind of show them and I was and I was telling them why it was a good deal. And honestly, in my opinion, I still believe that multifamily is the best investment you could make long term, especially if you get into the right type of deal, syndicated deals. I'm pretty sure you guys are doing some type of, you know, preferred return on the front end, plus some type of investor split on the back end. So it, it just it's a way for them to participate, get ownership. Uh, cash flow with you guys get get some money coming in right now and then get a nice big chunk on the back end when you guys refinance or sell that it, it, it I believe in the depth of my heart that that's the best way however as you said people don't know what the fuck they want so here's what was happening people were like setting up appointments with me hell yeah I want to fucking go so I'm gonna use this fucking lady for an example and so this lady was saying, hey, I, I got this money. I have all this money. I'm getting close to retirement age. You know, I'm a working professional. My boyfriend's a working professional. We're both getting close to the retirement age. Um, you know, he's, he likes to do handyman stuff. So when we do, when we do these, um, these deals, I bought a multifamily last time. It was a small one, like a 10 plex, and he's doing all this stuff himself. And honestly, what we want is we just want to make money without working. So I said, okay, perfect. Here's what I have available. So that, that's, what, that's what they did. We talked. We came down to the wire. I said, all right, hey, here, here's, what, here's what's at. We need that money. Oh, I can't, I can't let you borrow that money because, um, you know, we found another deal that I'm going to buy. And I'm like, weren't you just complaining to me last week that you didn't want to buy another deal to have to handle it because then he would have to work his ass off and do it and you would have to do this about it. Once again, they don't know what the fuck they want. They, they, they agreed. Yeah, multifamily sounds great. Yeah, making money passively sounds great. But then when it came down to the wire, oh, well, you know what? I, I would rather just invest this money myself and take on more projects myself. Even though throughout all of our conversations, she kept on telling me that what they really wanted, what their goal was, was to make real passive income. So there's what people say versus what their actions are. And that's, that's a big hurdle that people really come across when they're doing multifamily. 
So as I started asking people questions, as I started being like, look, man, just fucking be honest with me. Like, don't give me this horse shit that you can't come up with the money that you're moving money around. Like, fuck you. Just fuck. I'm honest with you. Fucking be honest with me. Well, so here's the thing is I don't really feel comfortable locking up my money for three to five years. Like, I, I, don't, I don't really feel comfortable doing this. Uh, I kind of want to do this part. I, I you know, I, I want to have a say in this. I want to have a say in that. Oh, okay. That's the real reason. Not because you couldn't come up with it or because you were moving shit around or because or you got your wife didn't whatever. Fuck you. That was the real reason. So that's when I came to the realization that I was doing my investors a, dis, a disservice by just offering one solution. I mean, how fucked up is that? What if your doctor did that? What if your doctor had some bonus every time you went to surgery? And really the only fucking thing, oh, I have a cough. <clears throat> oh, well, you need to go into surgery. But you haven't even diagnosed me. I already know you need to get surgery. I already know. Don't worry about it. I'm a doctor. That's what most of you motherfucking syndicators do. You, you already have a solution and you haven't even heard their fucking problem. And I, I just realized that and I said, man, you know what? I, I need to give people a better option. What do you want, Mr. Investor? What do you need? Well, I would like this, 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 and that, but I, I don't like properties that are not in my area. I, I want to have properties that are within my area. Great. Well, I have a new builds just for you. Yeah, you can fucking drive them. You can touch on them. You can fucking take your goddamn picture, show your fucking wife and your mama, hey, we own that one. I'm, I'm the owner on that one. You can fucking do whatever the fuck you want to do. Well, hey, you know what? I, I, I don't mind that the property's out of, out of state, but I don't, I don't like that three to five year stuff. That, that just seems too long. I don't know what's going to happen. Like if I was in your, if I was 40, like, like you guys, like I would probably do it, but I'm in my 60s. Like I, I don't want to lock it up for that long. Great. Well, fucking what about 12 months? How does that sound for you? Well, we'll be able to give you a residual. We'll give you a good fucking return. And at the end of 12 months, you get to decide whether you let me borrow it again or you get it back. How does that sound to you? Oh, you don't mind three to five years? You understand that I'm talking to you? You understand that I'm saying, hey, you're getting a smaller return on the front end, but it's actually going to be a much bigger return on the back end where your numbers are just going to be if you just do a little bit of fucking math? I am giving them a solution to their problems, not forcing my solution down their fucking throat. So I still do multifamily but that's not my only weapon in my arsenal. And honestly, dude, that has helped me tremendously to raise a shit ton of money. As you alluded to earlier, uh, the last part that I didn't get to through my journey was eventually moving into buying and creating notes out of state. And, and we're right now we're moving into the state of Ohio, particularly, well, actually the whole state of Ohio, but right now the, the place where we're buying a lot is over in the city of Cleveland. And over there in the city of Cleveland, we're basically going there to buy rentals, create cash flow, but more importantly, create notes that we can trade on Wall Street on the back end. That's a whole different fucking strategy. But the point of this was that I was able to take what I wanted to achieve and link it up with what my investors wanted. So now I, I put a post, well, two, three days ago that I had a note over in Ohio that I was looking to fill for $35,000. I'm willing to pay 12% annualized return. I'll pay you monthly. That's $350 a month coming to you for letting me borrow fucking 35 grand. And at the end of the year, you get a choice to get that back or not. The amount of fucking response that me and my business partner, Chris, got was stupid. Stupid. Between comments messages, text messages, phone calls, all that shit. Now, these people, as I said, they may be there right now. Maybe in the future they say, hey, you know what? I came across this big chunk of money. Um, I'm making a pretty good return here, so I don't mind having 100000 uh, that it's not going to come up till three to five years later. I, I don't mind that long-term strategy because now I'm making money on the short term. There's people that I talk to who say, hey, man, I want to talk to you about investing in multifamily. 
And then when we finish the conversation, they say, Hey, you know, I really like that new build. I think I'm, I think I'm going to go with the new build. I really like the structure 10% uh, guaranteed annualized. That's fucking great. And if the property sells and, and the, and I make, and you guys make more than expected, you, I get a bonus on the back end. I'll do that all day. I'm presenting them with different options as opposed to just having this cookie cutter. Let me shove down my solution down your throat because it's the only way that I know how to help you. It's so vital when you look at as a money raiser, as a syndicator, as an investor, as somebody who's using other people's money, OPM, you're, 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 you're using, you don't know what the fuck they had to do to get this money. You don't know where this money came from. You don't know if it was whatever, how, how they got it. You, you just know that it's precious to them. Your job is to protect and make them money. If you happen to make money, great. But that's not your fucking job. Your number one responsibility is to your investors. Fuck your fucking bank and fuck your fucking pockets. It's to your investors. You don't say, oh man, hey, sorry about that. We didn't make any money, tough shit, motherfucker. Better luck next time. Nope. That's not the type of shit. That's not how this shit works. And this honestly runs into the other best practice, which is create an experience so pleasant. They just want to bring you other people. Because one thing about birds of a feather, they flock together. People with fucking money to invest usually hang out with other fucking people who have money to invest. And when you treat somebody good, they'll treat you real good. They'll connect you with people. And man, I, my, my richest investor right now came from a guy who let me borrow $30,000. The guy had such an amazing experience that he came back and said, Hey man, um, you know, before I got into real estate, I, I used to do luxury car sales. And this guy, he was a client of mine. Um, we, we still, after I quit, we still became friends. His family's friends with my family. This guy just sold his company to some fortune 500 company that paid him a shit ton of fucking money. And he literally has a ton of money just sitting in the bank, not doing anything right now. I told him about you last time and he's interested in talking to you. That right there, that is value. That is invaluable. That is gold. That is worth more than any fucking slick line that you can say, any creative technique, any, any way to turn a no into a yes. That's worth way more than all that shit. Man, that, what I'm hearing from you and what I've seen from you, something I actually want to talk about right now, is that you are actually getting people to raise capital for you. I mean, yeah, buddy. Because you, you made a... You made a really nice deal for somebody, gave them a great return, and then they ended up bringing more people. And that's that's something I think maybe not a lot of people are focused on, is getting other people. I mean, I see you posted on, on uh, Instagram, hey, this dude gave me money and I gave him a check. Yep. And so we, <laughs> that's one of the other realizations that I came about raising money, is a lot of times when people raise money, they only focus on, let me talk to people with money. And they're actually assholes to people that don't have money. Oh, you can't do nothing for me. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm focused on finding people with money. Okay, whatever. The thing is, is you don't know who somebody is. You don't know who somebody knows. You don't know who somebody connected with. You don't know any of this shit. One of my students, um, he was talking to me and I was coaching him and I was telling him, you know, you need to start raising money. Here's how you do it, whatever. And I'm like, just talk about it. Just post it. Just, just post about it. So he did, he posted about it. His surfing buddy said, Oh man, by the way, I got, I actually have about 150,000 sitting in the bank right now. I'd never told you, but my family are fucking accredited investors. They're fucking multimillionaires. So let's, how about we invest this hundred thousand and see how that goes. And if it goes great, then there's going to be a whole lot more behind it. My student was like, I didn't even know he had fucking money. He's my surfing buddy. Like we just hung out and fucking kicked it and surfed. Like that was it. I didn't do that, that. I didn't know. I didn't, I thought he was kind of a beach bum. I didn't really know he had money. Yeah. You said it to me the other day. You're like the people that you think have money don't have shit. And the people you don't think have money, they're the ones that have money. 
There, then that's, and I mean, you're starting to get into the capital raising part of this business. You will attest to that. You, you see that. The, the, because once again, this goes back to the original concept that we started this whole conversation with, which is those perceptions that we have on our head. We're supposed to be rich people do this. Rich people drive Mercedes. Rich people live in these big houses somewhere. They, they, they wear designer clothing. When in reality, those are people trying to pretend to be rich. Really rich people, they don't mind driving around in their fucking little 10, 15-year-old Honda Civic. Because they don't bother me none. Who gives two shits? So as you alluded to earlier, uh, this year I officially became a millionaire when we closed on our latest multifamily. And throughout my journey, I, you know, I came from a, an environment where gang activity was very preminent. Uh, you know, the, 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 just the whole bottom section of society. And those people that had an issue with me, I never once even tried to correct them because it didn't fucking matter. If some low life piece of shit thinks I'm fucking full of shit and I'm a liar and a this and that, <laughs> okay, whatever. You know, you're not, you're not really fucking happy. You're, you don't really have that. You don't really own. Okay. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't have shit to prove. And this is what I found about people with money is they don't have shit to prove. It don't fucking matter. You're going to laugh at them for driving their fucking little 15 year old Honda Civic. They're going to laugh at you because your stupid ass is paying $600 a month for that fucking Mercedes Benz because you want to look rich. Seriously. That's typical, man. It is. And that, yeah. that's, that's what you, know, you alluded to, which is people that usually, people that have money don't look like they have money. Now, I do want to touch on one more thing here before we move on, which is other people raising money for me. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. I had some questions about the legalities about that. Sure. So there, there is definitely certain ways that you can do it. You cannot broker people. You cannot give somebody a commission for bringing you money. Um, you can pay people to market for you. You can pay them a, an, an association or some type of fee, but you, legally they cannot be out there basically saying, hey man, um, I'm raising money for this guy. Like that's just not the way it works. So normally what I tell people is, I don't want you to sell anything for me. I don't, actually, I don't need you to sell anything. I just, wanna, I just want you to let people know that this is out there. That's all. And, and I don't want you to pitch anything. I just want it to come up in conversation. Oh, hey, man, you know, I was, I was looking at investing. I, I, I know this guy who's been doing it for many years, and he pays like 10% or something. That's it. Like, that's it. I'm not asking them to sell anything for me. I'm not asking them to do anything other than just open the channels of communication. But and if, as somebody I, gives, if somebody gives a number like 10%, hey, this guy's giving 10%. Doesn't that cross the line right there? No, because you're just sharing information. That's what they're doing. Like I'm, I'm paying. I mean, fuck you. You could, you could tell your mom right now because you saw my post on fucking Facebook where I said I'm paying 12%. I'm selling a fucking note. I'm paying 12%. Like you, what now you saw it online and you're not able to tell anybody about it. How is that even, how does that even make sense? Well, they said, uh, I mean, lawyers say if you are selling something and presenting numbers, then you are basically becoming, you're creating a security. So, yeah, no, well, whoa, whoa. so you're, we're not creating any type of security. We're not syndicating money from people. We're not, we're not doing any of that. Once again, people are just sharing with people that they know hey, I know a guy. But That's you yourself it. post numbers. So All the time. So do you have legal structures in place to protect you in case somebody says, hey, you promised fucking 12% on Instagram. Where the fuck's my 12%? Or what if they take you to a lawyer or some shit like that? Well, first of all, yes. So I do have an SEC attorney that I work with. Second of all, that will never fucking happen because if I promise 12%, guess what? I'm going to fucking pay you 12%. 
Fuck my profit. Fuck my money. I promised you something, so you're going to fucking get it. And that's the main point that I want to give to you guys that are out there raising money. Seriously. Nonetheless, though, all the shit that we have is documented. If somebody lends, so for example, that the Cleveland deal, I need $35,000. Guess what? That person gets a first position mortgage, just like a fucking bank would. They get a promissory note, just like a fucking bank would. They get, uh, they're the beneficiary on the insurance, just like a fucking bank would be. I don't need to, they don't need to worry about me keeping my promise. It's all right there. It's their fucking house. I'm not, once again, I'm not raising money. I'm not, I'm not putting it together. Now, when you're dealing with a syndication structure, like what you're doing, that's a whole different ball game. Now you're running into reg D shit. Yeah. That's completely different. It's not illegal to sell a note. I have a note for this amount. And a note is just a promissory note. I'm selling a promissory note. I'm promising to pay whatever investor 10% return on their money for this amount of money. And the promissory note structures, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like I, it, if you are syndicating money, that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole, whole different conversation. As I said, I do have an SEC attorney for that, but that's not, that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is people just sharing the word, sharing the information. And the best thing that I tell to these people, because here's what happens, and here's the point that I was trying to make earlier, which is get in where you fit in. So many people believe that they have to be the operators. So many people believe that they have to be the ones uh, that, that are buying and fixing and flipping and signing the contract and going to escrow and doing all this shit. They believe that that's the only way that they can make money. When in reality, and you can attest to this, Ruben, because of where you're at right now, what most of us, especially higher level people, always need is money. And we will gladly cut somebody into the deal or, or find a way to compensate them in one way or the other for fucking bringing money. Yeah, you definitely have a lot more flexibility than I do about that. And once again, this is one of the other reasons why I got out of strictly doing multifamily. Now, if somebody approaches me, so you say, hey, uh, mom, you have this money. Um, you know, there's this guy in my mastermind. He does investments and he, you know, he said something about like 10% returns or something like that. Like, you know, maybe I could give you his number and you talk to him or whatever. So if we start communicating and then I break down, hey, here's my programs that I have. And your mom's like, hey, I want to, I'm interested in that multifamily. Great. Now let's move into that structure. That's a completely different structure. Here's, here's how it is. Here's how those numbers break down. I do pay that amount for here, for this, for that, but here's what that looks like. And here's a whole different conversation because you need to go, if you're, especially if you're syndicating money, there's structures to that. There's times you can't just, you can't just meet somebody one day and get a check the next day. Uh, th there's a whole different process that goes through raising money. I'm and I, and I do want to make that separation. Yeah, man. I'm not I doing this. Do it that way. Like, I have to build relationships with people because you can, like, if you take someone's money and you put it in and you park it into an investment, like, and you barely know that guy, that opens up all kinds of, you know, a can of, big old can of worms. So you a big old can of worms. And guys, if you are going to be raising money specifically for um, multifamily, specifically for syndication, don't do shit without talking to an SEC attorney. Do not do the, the, the SEC attorney that's representing you. That's the person that you need to be asking this information. Yeah, man, that's sound advice. And by the way, just to, if it's not clear, neither Brian nor myself are lawyers. You know, we're just regular dudes. They're talking on a show. Definitely get advice from an investment person or somebody that you trust and do your due diligence because we're not, qualified to speak on the legalities of raising capital but we'd like exactly. to talk about and once again guys I, I want to once again make the difference that uh, this is not to syndicate money this is not to pool money together into a deal this is when i sell notes i have a promissory note i have a first position note i have a second position note i am willing to do this 
Like that's it. It's not about syndicating money in a multifamily. If you are looking to syndicate money in a multifamily, you cannot advertise that on Facebook for the most part, especially with depending on the type, if you're doing a 506B or a 506C or a 506D or a 504, those are all completely different structures. However, for the most part, unless you're doing a, 50, a 506B, uh, no, a 506D, you're not able to advertise at all. So that's a whole different thing that you talk to your investors. But if you're doing a, a note, then you're able to um, then you're able to do it that way. Hey, what's up, King? King Leon. Hi. Hey, Hello, what's up, man? buddy? You wake up from your nap. <laughs> yep, yep. Welcome to the Capital Razor Show, man. <laughs> and guys, you know why? I, I literally just text my nephew to bring him a because I heard that he was up. Second of all, because I want to remind you why we do this stuff. You know, when we do these type of shows, people really focus on the money aspect of it. This is why I didn't get into how much money, like, because it doesn't fucking matter, honestly, guys. Really what is important to me is that I get to hang out at home with my son, relax, you know, smoke some weed, take care of my baby boy, make him some breakfast, make him some lunch, and be able to share a freedom lifestyle. And the way that you get there is by helping other people get there. By helping other people get there. And the best way to do that is to help them achieve their goal, which is why I love the program that I'm rolling out. And I haven't named it yet, but it's going to be specifically to help people bring me money and connect me with who they know that has money. Because these are just conversations. And, and this is what I was saying earlier, get in where you fit. And a lot of people think that they have to be the, the operator when in reality, they don't even want to manage an apartment complex. They don't want to deal with the property management. They don't want to deal with the contractors. They don't want to deal with the tenants. But they think that that's the only way that they can make money. When in reality, as I said, people like me are willing to, to pay somebody or compensate somebody for connecting me with somebody for money or with money. Like, and, I, and you alluded to this. I put it, there's a kid that I met, he, um, he was brand new. He wanted to get into the business. He's like, hey, I've been wholesaling and I've been doing this, this and that, how, how can I be a value? Which by the way, is a great way to make, build a relationship with somebody who's above you. Don't just sow there, give me, give me, give me, give me. So he came up to me, he's like, how can I be a value? What do you currently need? And I said, you know what, man? I'm at the stage right now where I have a lot more deals than I have money available. And he's like, oh, I know, I know somebody with money. His, his girlfriend's mom had money. And uh, they had literally just had a conversation, uh, you know, a week or two ago about, hey, I got some money for real estate. And if you ever need some, let me know. So we connected them. They let me borrow 160000 for a new build that I'm doing here in Phoenix. Uh, I paid him, I paid him a few percentage. And he, you know, he, he made like $3,200 or some shit like that just by connecting me, just by having the conversation. So I really want to put it out there, get in where you fit in. This is something that you are actually doing right now yourself, Ruben, get in where you fit in. Hey man, you know what? I know that I can build relationships. I know that I can open up those conversations. I'm not, I'm not going to be getting into the detail and I don't have the experience that my, that my partners do, but I know that I can build a relationship. I know that I have a social media presence. I know how to leverage my presence and I know how to connect people with it. That's really all I'm fucking doing, man. All I'm doing. That's, 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 that's all I, I'm going for. But that allows me to do three things, which is the main point that I'm trying to make and what I was talking about, help other people get to where they want to. That allows me to help somebody who doesn't know much or is in, new in the business or whatever, make some money just by connecting me with somebody. That helps me make the investor some type of passive income because that's one thing that most people need more than anything, especially people getting close to retirement age, is passive income. They need supplemental income. This is why you see people working at the fucking Walgreens, at the Walmarts, at the Home Depots, at the Best Buys, and their fucking retirement age. They're not there because they're fucking bored. They're there because they can't make fucking ends meet because their retirement, their pension, their Social Security is just not giving them enough. And third of all, I'm able to build cash flow and generational wealth for myself. So I'm able to help these three structures and be able to put all these things together and make it a win-win-win scenario for everybody involved. 
that that right there that is the only reason why you should even be thinking about raising money if you're thinking about how much money can i make how many deals can i have how big can my portfolio be get the fuck out of here man because you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna end up in a lawsuit you're gonna piss somebody off you're gonna convince some old lady to let you borrow money even though she didn't really want to but you kind of fucking talked her into it and shit and now she's gonna be suing you because she's unhappy because you didn't hear what the fuck she wanted you just wanted to push your shit down her throat and that is, guys, is one thing that you don't want to do. Like I said, I hope that you guys are getting the message here. I hope that you guys are understanding where the authenticity comes from. I hope you guys are understanding that it's not about you. It's about the investors. And you get in where you fit in, just like, just like Ruben did. He's got in where he fit in. He didn't say, man, I have to be buying these things myself. I have to be the one managing these things myself. Because you know what a lot of people would have done, and you alluded to this in the beginning, Ruben, I'm going to go buy a fourplex. I'll manage that myself. I'll come in and I'll paint the shit, and I'll screw the thing, and I'll screen all the tenants, and I'll deal with the city. That's the only fucking thing I knew. The only thing Fuck I that. knew. But yeah, man, I had, a, I had a mindset shift, man. I presented a plan to fucking acquire a shitload of fourplexes, doubling my portfolio over time. And someone just fucking stopped me playing prank and said, why don't you just buy the whole fucking portfolio right off the bat? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, man. Like, ah, man, all right. I need to burn this. Let's do it. Yeah, like, buddy. That's where it's at, dude. I need to invite you to come up and uh, go camping at the ranch in Sedona, man. I'd love to take you up there, dude. Oh, bro, I, I am down for camping at any time. Hey, Leon, get your ass over here. Come on. I got him a little drum set. <laughs> so now he come here. Look. Oh, come here. Let's yeah, go. take Leon, dude. I would love I would love to go to Sedona. And so I would go to Sedona at any time. And then camping, of course, let me know. And by yeah. the way, your your wife is fucking awesome. She's like such a ball of positive, amazing energy. So yeah, dude, I'd love to hang out with you guys. That'd be fantastic. All right, I'll, I'll hit you up at the Two Percent Club, and we'll let, I'm gonna wrap up the show, dude. But it's been so fucking cool to talk to you and and to let loose a little fucking bit, you know, because I gotta be all tight on the fucking show half the time. But I'll try and loosen up and take your advantage, uh, take advantage of your advice, dude. Good, good. Well, and you know what? I I hope this once again. I hope that this you guys resonated with the message. I hope that you guys understood the message of authenticity, being yourself at all times. Second of all is I hope I inspired a few people. I hope that there was some people out there watching your show saying, oh man, you know, I could never raise money. I could never be a millionaire. People will never take me seriously because I'm brown, because I come from this neighborhood, because of my, I don't have, know anybody with money. I cuss a lot. I, I'm, not, I'm not your corporate structured person. I, I hope that, that this, this interview, this interaction, helps as inspiration for other people to be like, shit, if that motherfucker can do it, well, I guess I can do it too. If I can do it and raise capital just being myself and talking to people, there's no reason why anybody else in the audience can't do it too. Exactly, brother. So, dude, I really, 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 really appreciate you. Um, I really appreciate you having me on the show. I really appreciate you uh, letting me share my message. As I said, guys, if you guys are not following me, follow me on Instagram at cash flow creator i literally share everything every aspect of my life and ruben i don't know if you saw but i went to extreme midget wrestling yesterday i saw that shit I dude, he's he's little, little, little black dudes like jumping on each other and you're like proud i think did you have the little doll that you have and you put a mask on it and shit no that was they i bought that from the merch stand so they had a they had a little merch stand and the, I, they had a bunch of dolls and stuff. And I said, hey, which one of these guys is actually going to be wrestling today? So the one guy pointed at, at one of them. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. And, yeah, he was out there wrestling. So I was like, ah. Dude, it was, it was amazingly insane. But, guys, if you want to see that and other things like that, follow me on Instagram at Cashflow Creator. And if you want to get a hold of me, if you um, – like the message if you want to talk to me about partnering up in something if you just need some advice if you want some help with something reach out to me send me send me a message let me know hey i heard you in the capital razor show uh, i love getting those messages by the way so send them over really appreciate that ruben uh, i'm gonna hold you to the ranch stuff 
So I'm going to probably, I'm going to be traveling for the next month and a half. I'm going to Guatemala, then I'm going to Dallas, then I'm speaking in Houston, then I'm going to uh, Korea, then I'm going to Japan. So I'll probably be, I'll be gone for almost two months, but when I come back, I'm going to definitely uh, hold you up to that. <laughs> All right, we'll see, man. It gets fucking cold there to camp. We're starting about late October, man. It gets chilly, dude, but it's still... Whatever, we'll, we'll go next year. It's okay. Yeah, Either so way. It's fire season right now, but eventually the nice thing about it is once fire season goes away, we can camp like right on the property and like i think even even during fire season if you're really careful and uh don't let anybody know sometimes you can get away with a little <laughs> fire but like in the winter time dude you can go all out man and just party throw up throw like uh some s'mores on there dude and kick back drink a beer and then and then and guys this is what it's all about this, it's this is what it's all about adding value building relationships and this is why i said from the beginning i make the majority of my money smoking weed drinking alcohol and eating food with people. And honestly, those three things are just an excuse to build relationships. So if you want to raise money, if you want to really learn how to raise money, learn how to build relationships. And that will bring you more money than you would know what the fuck to do with. And all the motherfuckers that have problems with the profanity, get fucking over it, man. I swear to God. <laughs> all right, brother. I appreciate you. All right, man. I'll see you on Tuesday. All right, brothers. Take care. Get in where you fit in.